What's up guys? So winter is here and one of the main questions that I get during the winter time is how cold is too cold, especially if you grow plants that are not native to your area, like tropical plants. So usually what I normally tell people all the time is as soon as you know it's going to freeze in your area, you need to start protecting your plants. Another thing that I tell people is do not rely on the forecast because the forecast is just an average. It's, it's the guess what the temperature is going to be in your area. Like in my area, I have a forecast coming up of 27 degrees this upcoming Sunday. 27 degrees, well, in my area, normally I get colder. When protecting plants, you need to understand a few things. You need to understand what type of plant do you have? Do you have a frost sensitive plant or do you have a cold sensitive plant? If you wanna learn more about it, I got another video where I discuss that in detail, so go ahead and watch it. But just to give you a quick summary, a frost sensitive plant is a plant that ice will damage. These plants normally, they can take the cold, but they will not take ice. One of those plants in my area is this Sapodilla over here, also known as Sapote Chico Chico. In my area, this plant has taken 19 degree ambient temperature sustained for 12 hours straight for several nights and it did not take any damage. But as soon as ice touches it, it is dead, especially if it's not rooted in the ground. So in order to protect this plant, you gotta cover it. This is the frost cloth that I'm using and you just drape it over the plant and you're good to go. That will prevent the water from getting to your plant, freezing and well, damaging your plant. But one of the things you gotta keep in mind is you gotta make sure this frost is not touching your plant. Because if this builds up ice on top of it, it will transfer the cold to the plant and whatever is touching it will get damaged. Just like you, if you put ice right against your skin, you'll get frostbite. It's the same principle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some stakes around to raise this off the plant and we are good to go. So this is one of the plants that we gotta cover. I got another plant over here. This one is a Swiss cheese plant. So this one's gonna get, gonna get covered today. I got a Sapota over here, Chico Chico, a lot bigger. This one, usually once it get bigger, it's gonna be a little more difficult to protect. So this is why you need to understand microclimates. Microclimate, a microclimate is an area where the temperature differs from the surrounding environment. Since I have, since I have a lot of uh, bigger uh, trees in this area, they retain the heat being radiated into the sky. So what happens is it takes longer to freeze in this area than out there in the open. So this is the reason why I planted this sapote over here because it's naturally protected. For how long? Well, not forever. And I don't know how cold it's gonna get, but if it drops into the low 20s, no amount of microclimate is gonna help any of my plants in my area. Just to give it a little bit of help, we're gonna go ahead and drape this over and wrap it. So even though it's protected by the microclimate in here, if it gets too cold, it's gonna have some protection. These are my sweet potatoes over here. I got a video coming up on it. I was hoping they grew a little more, but you know what? Sweet potatoes don't like the cold. We're just gonna drape something over here so they don't look disgusting. Sweet potatoes grow very easily in my area and they love the heat, but you know what? This is what everything looks like in the winter. Another tree that we're gonna be covering today is my fruit punch mango. As you can see, we have the structure built already. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap it top and bottom and I'm gonna have my heaters ready in here. I'm gonna show you in just a few minutes what heaters I use and how I actually protect a cold sensitive plant. But just to give you an idea, a cold sensitive plant, even if you give it overhead protection to prevent the ice from touching your plant, it's still cold in there. And the ambient temperature is going to damage a cold sensitive plant. So in order to protect it, you have to change the ambient temperature around your plant forever, for the life of the tree, every single year because if you don't, all it takes is one night and this tree has been in the ground for about five years plus, I will lose everything in one single night if I do not protect it. So you have to change ambient temperature and one of the ways you can do that is by building a greenhouse and if it gets too cold, you gotta put a heat source in there. Something else we gotta do is we gotta move plants around. You can see open sky over here, so frost can come in sideways. So we're gonna move the wax jambo right here. These guys are frost sensitive in my area. They can take the cold, but as soon as ice touches it, they're dead, especially in 
uh, small plants like this. So these guys, they're gonna go over here in the meadow. As you can see, I got a shade cloth over here and that will actually stop the frost from forming around the plants. We gotta move the star fruits right here. This Swiss cheese plants over here, they're too many, so I think I'm just gonna cover them over here and they'll be okay because as you can see, open sky up here. The main mistake people make when protecting their plants is they just put overhead protection on top and they call it good. But you have to understand, if it's windy that night, frost can come in sideways because what frost is, is the water vapor in the air. And as the temperatures drop, that water vapor will turn into actual liquid water and it will drop to the ground. Getting your plant wet and if the temperatures keep on dropping, well, guess what? That is frost. Something else we're protecting is my Ruby X Guava right here. This guy is huge and last year I did not do anything, but last year we had the warmest temperatures out of any other year ever. So I cannot just get complacent and assume the temperatures are gonna be the same this year because this year or last year the temperatures have been crazy. So we're just gonna drape something over, clamp it together and you know, that's gonna be better than nothing. I also got my Barbados cherry over there. As you guys can see, it's already wrapped. Barbados cherry is frost sensitive and they hate frost. As soon as frost touches it, it will die back and it will set you back easily six months to a year. So I don't wanna get set back again. So that's the reason why it's wrapped. I got my Ruby Supreme Guava right there. Something else that's getting protected that I don't wanna move is my dragon fruit. Dragon fruit in my area, they grow very easily, especially when it's hot, but they hate ice, frost. They can take the cold as long as ice doesn't touch them. So we're just gonna be covering this guy right here. You can see over there, I got my Buddha belly bamboo. Last year, I, I did not realize that my irrigation system was not hooked up. So last year, it did not get water the entire winter. Months and months went by without getting water. And even though this guy can take the cold and they can take frost without water, anything will become weak. And guess what? It will die a lot faster if they take damage from frost. So it recovered this year, it grew back, but I don't wanna lose it again. So I cover it and to help it along this, this winter and I make sure my irrigation system is in there. When you cover your plants like this, you have to understand, if it's completely watertight, the water will not get down there where the root system of your plant is, especially if it's a younger plant. And even though it rains, the water will stay on the outside and on the inside it's going to be dry and that's the main problem I had last winter and I almost killed my plant. I got some more plants over here, bamboo plants. These guys, they can take it even though they're gonna look ugly. What we're gonna do just to keep them looking nice, I'm just gonna drape something over them and that will help them take the frost a little better. Silk floss trees right here, with that said, so let's go ahead and answer today's question. And that is, when should you start protecting your trees? Well, the quick answer for that is, as soon as you know it's gonna drop below freezing or close to freezing, you need to start protecting your trees. Because if you don't, well, that's all it takes to kill them. And that's how most people kill their plants during the winter time. Let me answer another misconception about plants if this is your first winter going through with your tropical plants or any other plant that takes damage in the winter time. So you have a big tree in the ground and you think you don't have to protect it. Wrong. A big tree, just as a small tree, will always take damage in the winter time if the temperatures get cold enough. This is one of the biggest red flags that nurseries are gonna do to you out there, especially when purchasing trees at their nurseries. They're gonna sell you a big tree and they're gonna tell you it's gonna be stronger than a smaller one. That is wrong, do not believe them. Now, let's talk about the heaters that I use for my mango tree. This structure right here will keep my tree happy as long as the temperatures do not drop any lower than in the high 20s. I'm talking about maybe 27, 28, 29 degrees. The structure alone will keep the tree happy above freezing without a heat source. But anything lower than that, you need a heat source. So what do I use for my trees? This heater right here. This is a 500 watt heater. And uh, I actually screwed it into this piece of wood right here so it doesn't get tipped over inside the structure. And this thing right here, most of them have a safety uh, button on the bottom you gotta press it in in order for the heater to work. And if it tips over, well, that will turn the heater off and that's the reason why I screwed it into this piece of wood so that doesn't happen. 500 watts and this little heater has actually kept my mango tree right here alive 
with the outside temperature being 19 degrees. And I didn't even use plastic that year. Plastic will hold the heat a lot better. But one thing you gotta keep in mind with plastic is, if it gets cold enough inside, maybe not cold enough to damage your tree, the water will condensate against the plastic and it will drip down on your tree. And if it gets cold enough to freeze that water, well, your tree is wet now and that will create frost. It may not be cold enough to damage the tree, but frost will destroy your tree. And that happened to me last winter if you wanna watch that video. Another thing that I use for, let's say, if you don't have a, a power source close by, you can use this uh, propane uh, tanks right here. This tank right here, you can, it's refillable. So you can refill it as many times as you want. Link in the description. It has this little stand right here. So it keeps it uh, upright, it doesn't tip over. And then this right here, this is a 2000 BTU heater. It screws onto the top and you can turn it on. It has several settings, low, medium, and high. I usually keep it on low. And this heater right here, We'll keep my mango even warmer than that heater right there. So this is great for those uh, trees that you have that are not close by. And that's what I use for my trees. Anything else, I use a propane heater. Um, you can watch that video if you wanna learn more about it, especially if you're not planning on covering a tree. And this is what I have to do with all my trees in the winter time. Every single winter for the life of the tree. If you're gonna grow tropical plants or plants that will take damage in the winter, you will need to protect them every year. Because if you don't, well, don't be surprised if your plant dies after the winter. Some plants will take damage right away. Other plants will actually die slowly over several months. And by the time they die, it's literally almost summer next year and you don't even know what actually killed it. That is very common, especially for Jamaican cherry, also known as strawberry trees, which are very popular in my area, but one of the most cold sensitive plants. Anyways, if you liked the video, don't forget to like it. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Also, if you have any questions about plants, planting, anything at all, and you wanna get a hold of me, now you can go ahead and join my Patreon uh, group and you can post your question there. I will answer all questions there. I also post videos that do not make it into my main channel. And by joining, you'll be also supporting the channel. As always, guys, I will see you next time.